On this video, we're going to show how to remove the seats and reinstall Corpo A4s in a C6 Corvette 3LT, so heated seats, power seats, telescopic wheel. All right, so first step is to protect the door sill. Seems like uh, it's important, important part. Then remove the covers on the studs. Okay, with all four mounting, all four nuts off the mounting studs on the seat, I have the back of the seat tilted upwards and slid a little forward so I have access to this nut to take the seatbelt off and just pop the cover off as well on this. Okay, plastic cover is off. Another 15 millimeter nut on there to take off along with unplugging the sensor. Okay, so now that the seat belt is removed, I laid the seat back down, tilt it up. This is a 3LT. Remove this plug. Rotate this purple clasp and it kind of easily unplugs after you rotate it. Under there you see the airbag connectors. You want to unplug those. And uh, I believe you're good to go. Okay, so next is just kind of some final preparation before I pull the seat out, doing it by myself. It's kind of heavy. Don't want any scratches. It's just a bed sheet. Also tape the ends of the seat bracket, a little extra protection just in case. And uh, I think it's good to come out. Here's the passenger seat out of the car. I need to remove the occupancy sensor, the, the pad, the little gel pad, and that's on the other side of this denim protector pad. You can see a little bit of the packet there. It's a gel pack that needs to be removed. And this side of the seat belt, the tensioner pretension or whatever it's called. So this needs to be removed. A little concerned about how much room I have on here on the aftermarket. Corbo A4 seats to see if I can fit the Bray Krause lap mounts on there. Okay, so this is the plug that attaches to the seat belt receptacle here. And common complaint is that you have to cut this wire because it doesn't pass through the seatbelt frame and there's no way to get it out. Well, if, if you disassemble this plug, then you can fish it out without cutting the wire. So, if you're monkeying around. Okay, so you have to pull out a black clip and a copper clip, which is pretty self-explanatory. And then you just, the wires just come out. No cutting. Okay, occupant sensor, occupancy airbag sensor has been removed. This is what you see the denim on the bottom side. It has this plastic protective shield on the top. I'll keep that and put it underneath the seat. So it works correctly in the Corbo A4 that I get. Uh, some instructions say to remove the springs down here and slide it out from the bottom. Naturally, I didn't read the instructions and I untied this tether, pulled the seat cushion back, slid it out from the top. That was also very easy. So I think uh, you can uh, choose which way you wanna go there. Next is to remove this massive wiring harness. Okay, passenger side seat, wiring harness is out. A little bit of a chore. Okay, so driver's seat is out now too. I didn't bother showing that since it's four bolts. 
disconnect a couple plugs. Driver's seat, uh, less involved, not as many sensors and harnesses, thankfully. Uh, just have to remove this buckle with the pretensioner. Uh, it says on there, be very, very careful not to hook it up incorrectly. So if you, if you do remove the wires that are attached uh, and disconnect the, the plug so you can feed it out through and then reconnect the wires into the plug, make sure you have the wires uh, on the correct side of the plug so it operates correctly and prevent uh, any kind of issue from happening. As stated before, the pretensioner wire comes down through here, gets hooked up with the airbag harness. Thankfully, this clip can detach from this one. This clip stays with the seat. This clip detaches and goes to the harness. Disassemble the clip if you feel safe. Uh, if you feel like you're able to, disassemble the clip, pull the wiring harness out through the seat, and uh, good to go. Now that the seats are out and all the harnesses are swapped, on the driver's side here, we um, connected the pretensioner to the airbag connector, and then through Vetworks, we added this resistor to the side air Im side impact airbags, so you don't get a check engine light. I'll secure this down with some uh, electrical tape. Uh, since this is a 3LT and I have a telescopic wheel, I bought this harness from Vetworks. Again, it's a plug-and-play unit, so the telescopic uh, steering wheel still works, and then this goes into the regular body harness, and I believe this is the telescopic wiring harness. This box came all sealed up from Vetworks. Driver's side, 3LT. Passenger side had to swap the harness out of the seat. Uh, a little bit more of a mess. Same thing on the driver's side, pretensioner puts in here along with the uh, resistor and the uh, side impact airbags prevent a check engine light. Factory harness, we're keeping the occupancy sensor so the airbag works or doesn't work depending on who or if anything is sitting in the passenger seat. Important to replace this if you're gonna have a child in a car seat which happens. Seat position sensor. And uh, that's about it. All right, new seats finally arrived. Beautiful suede. Very impressed with how they look. Sorry if the light is not the best. Okay, first step is to uh, find the driver's seat and make it the passenger seat, which essentially you just take this occupancy sensor like uh, I removed earlier and put it in the new Corbo seat. Kind of slides up in there. I'll fit it uh, nicely. The handle needs to be on the tunnel side, on the passenger side. Seat bracket is on the passenger side seat. We have the occupancy sensor coming out here. Heated seat connector, which is aftermarket Corbo. And then these wires are coming from the pretensioner that's installed. All on the Corbo bracket. Everything's going pretty good. Had to grind just a little bit on this ear that goes into this slot. Just a little bit. Just wasn't fitting how I'd like it to. All right, passenger seat is in. Uh, feels tight. I'm about a 33 inch waist. Um, this will per promote you to uh, not gain weight. Definitely supportive. Uh, I put some washers in the front and the bolts. Uh, I believe three washers underneath the feet and four washers in between the frame and the seat. I did put a tether on the recliner because the passenger side the driver's side seat was put on the passenger side. Apparently that's the only way it fits. Other than that, uh, should be pretty fun. Okay, so I'm mounting the pretensioner for the belkle. And this little ear, this little ear had to get ground and I hit it with some touch-up paint now so it won't rust. I had to grind it a little bit, make it a little more narrower. 
uh, too wide as you see it now. You can see where I ground it a little bit. Otherwise it just wouldn't fit correctly in this slot. It just felt a little kitty wampus and wouldn't seat right. So I'll pull it off, ground just a little bit off. Fits nice and flush now. Okay, so driver's side pre-tensioner installed. Don't over tighten it. Be very careful when you install these. It's a tight thread. Uh, feels like you're stripping it, but you're not. For the latch, because it's basically, you're not able to uh, reach the latch. Uh, I put this tether on it, drilled a hole, put a tether on it. This tends to fall down anyway. I gotta find a way to keep it accessible and maybe loosely put it on this belt buckle somehow. Other than that, uh, again, shimmed up the front for a little rake. Uh, six M8 washers in between the bracket and the seat on each side. And then on the feet here, I put uh, three two five sixteenths and one seven eight seven sixteenths washer in between the floor and the feet on my driver's side i'm doing four on the passenger side i did three we'll see if that needs to be adjusted or not really easy on the driver's side just the seat heater that came with it uh, the pre-tensioner um, needs to get hooked up just it's just this connector uh, this other one this stays um, unhooked. So, uh, other than that, it's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Here's the um, uh, lumbar support and driver's seat going in. Of course, a little helper here. You were a big help, buddy. So, so I got a chance to take it out tonight and uh, some items to take away are uh, make sure you get the, the shaved base. Um, it seems like with the shaved base that I have, it still sits a little higher than factory. I would say an inch higher than factory. Um, the seat brackets, you're not able to slide as far forward as you would with a factory seat. So those who are a little shorter, be, be aware of that. When you first sit in the seat, uh, it feels pretty, pretty rigid, feels a little tight, but after uh, maybe a half hour, 20 minutes of driving in the car, your body starts to form nicely into the seat. A little more of a secure feel after a few uh, miles gone by and you can actually feel like you're sitting more into the seat maybe like a memory foam type feeling. Uh, and then lastly, so my car had heated seats to begin with and I wanted to retain heated seats. You have this factory switch. I'm not gonna hook it up to this factory switch. Instead, um, the factory switch seems confusing. It seems like it's difficult to, uh, to hook up to this factory switch. So instead I went to GM Parts Direct and ordered a um, uh, ashtray bezel without heated seats. It's about 150 bucks, but I'll put that in and then drill in the new switches on there. And um, pretty easy uh, for the for the heated seats. Should be just um, a couple wires. Plug it into uh, your fuse box. Put a ground in. Switches there. Done. Uh, would I do it again? Absolutely. Awesome mod. No regrets. Next up is brake house, harness bar, lap mount kit, and harnesses.